It's time to talk about the future of PC gaming hardware, which honestly is a bit of a grim topic when we really get down to it. So here's the deal. PC Gamer, amongst others, have collated many different sources to give us an idea of what the future of NVIDIA's 40 series cards may look like. And very unfortunately, it is quite similar to what happened with their 20 series cards, where we essentially get a super refresh, as in the cards are barely different, they have the super name on them, and we just all get to buy new graphics cards just that this time all of the prices are completely insane and the thing is this is not really what people were hoping for when ultimately when they look at 40 series cards they still see how expensive so many of them are where in many cases like versus say i don't know like a 4060 or something you're probably better picking up a 3070 if you can get it at a decent price second hand pc gamer then through their sources, were able to confidently confirm that the updated cards will be using the AD103 GPUs, so it's Ada Lovelace again, and that there's already one inside the 4080. Here's the quote from their reporting. The version used in the current RTX 4080 is almost the full chip, with just four streaming multiprocessors disabled. That's just a potential extra 512 shaders, and given the RTX 4080 already has 9,728 of them, an RTX 4080 Super based on the full AD103 die would only have 5.3% more shaders. There's nothing else to unlock in AD103, so unless NVIDIA is planning to increase the clock speeds for the super version, then performance improvements will hardly make it worth considering. Even if it does get launched with, say, a 10% higher clock, the more details we see about the 4080 Super, the more it looks like it's going to be a damp squib on release. That is absolutely not what you want to hear. Basically, the market leader being able to rest on their laurels, try to harvest up all those profits, while when we look over at the AMD land, we sort of get a bit concerned. But there's a little bit of information that may surprise you. When it comes to graphics revenue, AMD is shockingly close to NVIDIA. It's just not in a way that really matters to us PC gamers. Now, there is potentially a bit more hope with the 4070 Super. So, PC Games N reported that the 4070 Ti Super may be a 10% boost, while the 4070 Super might be a 29% boost, which certainly is a lot better. But they do say that in both cases, they have much less confidence about uh, what they know for pricing. Now, of course, when you consider that the 4090 actually outmatches cheaper cards on price to performance, which is basically an unheard of, very abnormal thing, a lot of this just doesn't seem like it's going to move the needle, unless there is somehow some form of miraculous price reduction for these supers. The optimal choice may still be buying a 4090, which, you know, you're you're going to be getting, what, an RRP of like $1,599. And of course, there has been um, recent spicy news regarding that chip, which is all, of course, tied into, you know, AI stuff. So that's uh, really quite rough. And this basically means the 4080 Super will continue continue the NVIDIA model of massively inflated prices because ultimately the crypto scalping period proved that, uh, yeah, that will, people will pay the premium. That's the really sad fact because look, once you're getting past a certain point, the ratio of like your actual profit uh, to the cost of a card, you know, it just gets better and better and better the higher up you go. So you'd maybe be surprised just how much money they can make off a like a lower number of customers. And of course for them, well, they don't really need to worry about competition. We'll get to AMD soon. And as well, their AI and data center teams are making absolutely staggering amounts of money. I mean, have you seen what happened to NVIDIA stock earlier on in this year? Actually, here's some Engadget reporting. It saw a record $10.32 billion in revenue in that sector alone, which is up 141% over the previous quarter and 171% up from uh, over a year ago, which, uh, yes, ultimately means AI equals very, very happy, big money, wahoo. And that's maybe not great for us because that's not what we're using GPUs for. Of course, graphical use cases may have got uh, GPUs, uh, you know, so far, but there are now new segments, new industries that uh, can leverage the architecture of the GPU, and uh, we may soon find ourselves, or perhaps already are, playing second fiddle. And this basically means when we think about NVIDIA's decision to not move towards uh, either, you know, a, not a super, but an actually a new generation, or maybe to not uh, try to launch a more affordable product to increase their market share and get the latest tech into gamers' hands, uh, 
you know, you, you then think, well, why the hell would NVIDIA need to do anything than just phone it in, collect free money, and focus on AI and data center? That is where we take a look at market positions. So this is from the Steam Hardware Survey, September 2023. We can see other Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA. Intel, 7.89%. AMD, 14.79%. And Team Green, 77%. That means that NVIDIA are absolutely dominant in the market. Of course, the Steam Hardware Survey is absolutely humongous. Steam basically is where PC gaming is, is going on. And we're really just never seeing their market share drop below 75%. And even if you go outside of Steam, it's kind of still the same picture. So John Petty Research in August suggested that AMD only made up 14% of the total market share based on shipping data. So basically the shipping data is backing up what we see on Steam. And that just means it's all NVIDIA. But guess what? It's not all new NVIDIA. Far, far from it. Uh, the majority of the population are using old NVIDIA cards, as in 20 series and older. Let's dive into it. In September 2023, the Steam Hardware Survey says that currently 28% of Steam has a 30 series GPU and only 6.5% of Steam has a 40 series card. Of course, as you're aware, the uh, 3060, I believe, is the single most popular card on Steam. Now, as a comparison, if we hop over to Team Red, we see that the RX 7900 XTX is the only 7000 series card on the list and it makes up 0.21% of Steam's population. And really, that's us seeing a reality. There is only so much space at the top level of GPUs. Why would anyone buy an AMD card when they can buy an NVIDIA card? That's a good question. I know a lot of AMD fans will have their own answers to that, but the market data shows that people go in the direction of NVIDIA. And of course, we're seeing all of the price points just increase and increase and increase. And if you're wondering why people are on 20 and 30 series cars, it's because scalping, it's been so goddamn hard to actually get a new GPU unless you're fortunate enough to be able to afford something that's quite a bit more new. And this basically means the poor bastards at AMD are in a really impossible situation. They need to somehow make a better base card than NVIDIA. They need to match all the specs that NVIDIA is, uh, you know, is, is putting out there or do better. They cannot have their cards cost more than NVIDIA's cards. They also need to make money off them they are in such a hard position playing catch-up. It does feel like a bit of a runaway snowball, especially when we see those heavy investments in the likes of DLSS, because every time that happens, oh no, AMD are really screwed. They have fewer resources and they are playing, right? They are playing a game that is defined by NVIDIA. As an example, yes, ray tracing. Uh, those of us like in the graphics space, we all kind of knew some ray tracing was going to be coming, right? NVIDIA really tried to push that as a market segment because they thought they could be dominant in it. They essentially were shaping the battlefield to uh, really towards the battle that they thought they could win. And when we get to the likes of DLSS, we see they're doing the exact same thing. Now, for us gamers, what does that mean? DLSS is pretty damn good, but also it does mean we start to feel fairly locked in. And then you begin to wonder, oh, is this part of why they have 77% market share? And this is where I wanted to touch a bit on Jeremy Laird of PC Gamers article raising uh, raising the problem with this uh, this headline, which is quite alarmingly titled, but it is fair. If RDNA 5 can't turn things around, I have a tough time believing AMD will stick around in PC graphics for much longer. And he echoes in the article a lot of the things that we have talked about above. Fairly sure I've seen a recent Jay's Two Cents video that I think is also echoing similar sentiment. It's something that a lot of us, I suppose, in the punditry space are getting kind of worried about because especially like there's so many games that come out actually alan wake a stellar game by the way it was one of the recent ones where they were fairly conservative in um basically in their like recommended settings and stuff like that but for loads of people who are maybe in a 10 series or a 20 series they actually felt quite bad about that but when you think about it that's like cards from seven years ago. I think for a lot of people, they don't feel like they've been able to be an active participant in that market for quite a decent span of those seven years. You know, with the shortages, the scalping and all of that. So I suppose it is, even though it is like unfair to say that oh, a brand new game, you know, is not really doing great and like seven year old hardware, you can also understand why someone's going to start to feel kind of mixed with their hobby at this stage. 
And I think what caught me is just how Jeremy phrased it. You really have to feel for AMD's graphics engineers. Every time it looks like they're catching up to NVIDIA, boom, Team Green rolls out some new techno wizardry and it's back to playing catch up again. And if market analysis and Steam survey data is anything to go by, what effort AMD does put in is for naught. NVIDIA is utterly dominant. And that's the problem. AMD cannot catch up because they constantly have got to follow NVIDIA. They've got to, you know, they're fighting on NVIDIA. NVIDIA's terms. And that means that they've got to put all of this effort into matching these new NVIDIA technologies, but that means they're always behind, right? Like FSR has been behind DLSS. It hasn't been as good in many cases. Uh, then the likes of, you know, ray tracing, uh, the machine learning supported DLS competitors, whatever it is that comes next, rather than make their own cool AMD thing, AMD is stuck having to catch up. And ultimately they know they can't afford to not do this because we know what it means for prospective audiences when they don't have their NVIDIA card being catered for, right? As an example, look at the whole debacle. Like as soon as Starfield didn't have native DLSS, people were really pissed because ultimately DLSS had to be their crutch. And you might be thinking, why AMD? And the answer there is pretty simple, actually, because AMD is the entire console market. And this is where things get a bit funky for the PC market. Now, this is reported from uh, some Federal Trade Commission leaks that the next Xbox is apparently going to be running an AMD CPU, or maybe an ARM CPU, which would be fairly interesting, as well as an AMD GPU. Of course, if you look at the current consoles, they're all AMD. It seems that the all AMD console thing is going to be continuing into the next generation. And this is is where actually if we compare the revenues it is fascinating so here is some tech power-up reporting from back in february that came up during our research for q4 2022 amd pushed 1.644 billion in gpu products encompassing all of its markets namely the semi-custom chips powering the xbox s s and the playstation 5 consoles and amd radeon products in the same time period right nvidia raked in 1.831 billion in revenues for basically what they do that powers the Switch, GeForce Now, and their GeForce products. And that basically means that even though 77% of the PC market is Team Green, AMD is actually taking in 89% of the revenue that NVIDIA are from all of the stuff that they are doing with their hardware partners. And that kind of explains how AMD still is a major player in the market, even though it has been on the back foot for such a long time. So what do AMD do? Do they keep on putting resources into what seems to be for them a losing game? Do they instead just focus on making parts for like direct hardware partners like the big consoles? You know, some people have actually been cheering for that to just say, you know what, screw it. We embrace Jensen, our team green NVIDIA overlords. May it all be NVIDIA forever. Developers will have fewer things uh, to optimize for. We'll have all these great shiny share technologies, a bright, bright future. Um, but of course, that's, you know, as long as you are willing to see the entire graphics market to a single player, which, uh, you know, then gets to basically set the terms of the deal. And as we can see from NVIDIA, they don't always play nice when they have a commanding market position. Because ultimately, while the very affluent gamer can get very good price to performance when they're picking up their 4090, for a lot of people, that's not the case. And it's actually starting to be a problem. Like it really is. There's lots of new games where, you know, in a way as PC gamers, one of the things we always kind of stood for is like, hey, we have our cool custom machines. We, uh, you know, we have games that look better than the console games. We have games that truly push the industry forward. And then we find maybe some PC game that, you know, is uh, completely unshackled because it's not going to be out on console and it just gets to go crazy in graphics. You know, can it run Crisis? That's what it was always like back in the day. But man, you compare GPU prices 10 years ago to now and things have, I mean, even taking inflation into, into account, things have really, really went up. And it's starting to cause interesting issues like yes city skylines not that well optimized but still a very large difference between the haves and have nots similar going on for alan wake and quite a few other titles in pc i mean re just remember what this year has been like for pc ports <sighs> yeah it's a kind of a rough situation. Now, of course, one place where there could have been some hope here was Intel coming in, you know, with the likes of Battle Mage uh, and everything for their GPUs. But we did see some rumors that they were maybe cutting back on their higher end plans there which honestly would be a shame. Um, I know Intel is another big mega company, um, but hey, if we have two big mega companies or three big mega companies fighting each other, that's a lot more healthy than, well, one mega company beating the shit out of the other two, which is what NVIDIA is doing in the space that we care about the most, which is PC gaming hardware. 
Okay, how has this impacted you? What graphics card are you using? I mean, how has the pricing of the 4000 series actually impacted you? I know it has impacted so many people uh, for the negative. So yeah, let me know in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time.